My name is Steve Dimzo, and I am a professional model maker for about 23 years. And I was involved in the creation of a studio scale replica of the Millennium Falcon from Empire Strikes Back, which was the first time that Lucasfilm had licensed such a vehicle in the history of fandom. Back in 2000, I co-founded a company called Master Replicas. In 2003, my group was granted access to the Lucasfilm archive. and We spent about a week researching the original 32-inch Millennium Falcon Empire Strikes Back miniature. Using a number of different techniques, we were able to recreate one of the most accurate replicas of the Millennium Falcon ever created. There were several models created for the original trilogy. Uh, there was a five-foot model used for A New Hope. And then again, it was slightly modified for use in Empire Strikes Back. However, they had some problems with uh, shooting some of the action scenes. They wanted the miniature to appear to be able to do more acrobatic movements. So therefore, they created a 32-inch model for use in the stop motion shots. It was built on a metal structure with vacuform plastic shells and then hundreds and hundreds of model kit parts were what they call kit bashed onto the surface to create the details. Um, it was much lighter than the five footer and according to the people I had spoken to at Lucasfilm, it was much easier to film because of the smaller size, lighter weight, and they could get farther away shots of the model. So in traveling to the archive, we felt uh, corporately that the best replica to make would be a replica of the 32 inch filming miniature as it has a good size, it's very displayable, and it was practical to make. After filming wrapped on Empire Strikes Back, the 32 inch miniature was used again in Return of the Jedi. Um, we found that because the Harrison Ford character in the cockpit was actually painted black to resemble Lando Calrissian for Return of the Jedi. So that's an interesting tidbit. The 32-inch filming miniature pretty much remained in the archive for all the years following the filming wrapping of Return of the Jedi. As we wanted to make the world's most accurate replica of the Falcon up to that point, we used a number of different techniques to replicate the model. One was called white light scanning, where we created a digital replica on the computer of the miniature. That involved, uh, if I recall, about 2.1 million data points. A lot of fans refer to it as a laser scan, but it's not. It's actually a white light, and it projects a data grid across the surface of the model, and then we would scan a section at a time, and then that is actually replicated as a 3D mesh in a computer. Uh, the resolution for the scan is approximately one ten thousandth of an inch. So we were actually picking up the dust on the original filming miniature. That's the level of detail that it can record to. We also took hundreds and hundreds of photographs of the miniature from every angle that we could. We pantoned all the colors, and we hired two consultants who I worked with to document all of the kit bash parts, as many as could be found. I think it would be interesting for the fans to point out some of the parts that were used in the kit bashing process on the 32-inch model. We did a basic, what we called LE, limited edition, which was numbered to 1,500 pieces. And then we did a Harrison Ford signature edition of about 750 pieces. Um, I remember the Harrison Ford model sold out probably in about a week, so it was very popular. In designing our replica, we wanted to be as authentic as possible. So there is approximately 1,200 individual parts in each model. Each individual model was hand finished, hand painted, and hand built by a team of very, very skilled artisans at our factory in China. Uh, the problem with the ILM miniature is that a number of different artists worked on it when it was originally created. So across the surface of the model, there were a number of different painting techniques evident. There's a number of uh, paint spatter techniques that are used on the filming miniatures. For most of the Star Wars models, they were done this way. Uh, they would take a paintbrush or a toothbrush and just dip it in paint and fleck it, and it would create a paint spatter across the model. You don't really see it per se on film, but it's one of those things that your brain kind of registers subconsciously as a level of detail. In some places, they would scratch panels with an X-Acto knife to replicate wear. In other places, they would use sandpaper. And in one, one or two places, they actually went in with a Dremel tool and gouged into the paint and the surface of the model. So those techniques varied wildly across the surface. I had my personal model 
sitting on my table for many years, and I had always wanted to do those few little extra details. Around 2007, I decided that while the MR model was really good, I just wanted to take it to the next level and get it as high as I could for quality and accuracy. So I decided to completely repaint the model. Um, that's one step. And then concurrently with that, a group of fans on one of the prop boards had found out that a number of pieces had actually fallen off the filming miniature when we had gotten to it at MR. And no one at Lucasfilm or MR or even any of our consultants actually picked up on it. When I went back and did research, I found that they actually were missing from the filming miniature when we had scanned it. So a group of about five, six of us were able to identify 10 pieces that were actually missing when we got to the model. So in a couple of them, I scratch built them because they were fairly simple shapes anyway. But I was able to locate with these other guys the majority of the, the uh, kit batch parts and replace them on my model. In 2014, D'Agostini had seen photographs of my model on the internet. They very quickly approached me and asked if I would be willing to do some consultation with them because my model had the provenance back to the original filming miniature. And the exciting thing about the D'Agostini model is that it's very, very accurate as it comes to the collector, but they will be able to use their own techniques and skills to add their own personal interpretation to it and achieve a professional looking result without having to be a professional model maker. There's always a little bit of area where you could take it to that final 10th degree. So I will be giving some tips and different techniques throughout the project to show you how to take that model to be exactly like the original filming miniature as much as practically can be done.